Hey Sand Freaks, welcome. Today I'm going to be reviewing Mason Margiela's replica line, including the newest addition to the lineup, On A Date. If you're new to my channel and you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe, hit notifications and like the video. It really does help my channel. Okay guys, so here we have a discovery set of the replica line as well as I purchased a 10 mil vial of the new fragrance on a date. I'm super excited. I have owned some of these fragrances in the past and others I've never tried before. So I do like Mason Margiela normally. There are fragrances I've really enjoyed from the range and I'm hoping I find a few more in this bunch. Okay guys, so this is a discovery set. You just pull it out like this and they look like that. Is that the right way? They look like that. Being that there are 11 fragrances in this lineup, I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on the individual fragrances. I'm just going to give you guys some thoughts that I thought when I smelled them. The first one we're going to talk about is Jazz Club. Jazz Club is one of the fragrances that I have owned in the past, so I am quite familiar with it. It really is a yummy, gorgeous, rummy, boozy tobacco fragrance. It's actually one of my personal replica favorites. It has the most amazing lasting power considering that these fragrances are EDTs and not EDPs. I feel like Jazz Club does lean a little masculine, but there is no reason that the right woman couldn't pull it off. It's this warm, cozy, boozy, smoky winter scent. Definitely polarizing and strong enough to cut through all those layers in the cold air. I'm so sorry about my voice. <laughs> I particularly enjoy the tobacco note in this fragrance. I feel like it's balanced to perfection with that yummy sweet rum and vanilla bean. It really does kind of engulf the whole fragrance, balance it out nicely, and you don't get overwhelmed on anything specifically. It also has this sticky sweet gourmand feel to it, which again is right up my alley as a gourmand lover. When I visualize the gentleman that would wear this fragrance, I visualize a very sexy, confident male wearing an Armani black on black suit or a woman with a real cool edge to her. You know, she doesn't care for labels. She's just cool and she knows it. The next fragrance is Lazy Sunday Morning. This one is also one that I've owned in the past. Lazy Sunday Morning is really a very clean, fresh laundry scent. It perfectly captures the scent of sleeping in late on a Sunday morning and waking up to gorgeous, fresh, crisp, white linen. I really did enjoy Lazy Sunday Morning. I chose not to repurchase it, only being that for me personally and where my taste preference gravitates to, I'm much into sweet gourmand fragrances not clean scents, even though this is beautiful, I actually prefer this one as the candle scent. In all honesty, as much as I like the scent, I feel I could achieve the same result by showering, washing my hair and washing my sheets and saving myself $200. If you are somebody who really gravitates towards clean laundry fragrances, this one is definitely a great pick. However, if you're after something unique and complex, this one is not the one. The next fragrance is Under the Lemon Tree. Under the Lemon Tree is not one that I had owned before or tried before. And it kind of confused me because considering the name, I didn't get lemon. I definitely got loads of tart, citric, sour lime with the green stemmy greenery attached. There are green elements as well. I definitely do get that sour, citric, lime feel with the greenery attached, the stem still, but I don't actually get lemon, I get lime. I do get some juiciness from the lime, but honestly, I get more bitterness. It's suggestive to me more of the skin of the lime as opposed to the juicy flesh. Does it make me feel like I'm standing under a lemon tree? Maybe. 
It isn't a bad scent by any means. It's just a little underwhelming for me. It's almost reminiscent to me of a citric greenish laundry liquid scent. In my opinion, I do not believe under the lemon tree is justified in its 200 plus dollar price tag. The next fragrance is by the fireplace. This is another one of those fragrances that I've owned before and I really, really enjoy. I'm not traditionally a lover of a very smoky fragrance, but I have to say by the fireplace does it extraordinarily well and brings it this balance that counteracts some of that smokiness and makes it just really enjoyable to smell. It's like it has that smoky feel and then it has this beautiful, sweet, toasted marshmallow underbelly. And I think that's the beautiful balance that I get. I think it is definitely very successful in transporting your mind to sitting by an open fireplace and toasting ooey gooey marshmallows on a stick for sure. I think by the fireplace would be perfect for somebody who's after a grown up marshmallow scent. There is nothing juvenile about this scent. It really is an elevated marshmallow fragrance. The next fragrance is Bubble Bath. I have not owned Bubble Bath before, so I'm not very familiar with it, but I have really good expectations with the note listings like coconut and things. I'm hoping this one's beautiful. That first initial smell of this fragrance was so anticlimactic, I'm struggling to put it into words. When I saw coconut soap and lavender in the scent notes, I got really excited. Unfortunately, it doesn't smell as good as the notes would suggest. Unfortunately to me, I'm just getting an unmemorable, generic, soapy scent. It may lead your mind into that bath mentality because it's soapy, but it, it smells far more to me like a generic soap bar than a indulgent, soapy, lathered up, coconutty bubble bath. I barely get to pick up on much coconut at all. The patchouli for me is non-existent and I just feel like it's an overpriced clean fragrance. The next fragrance is Autumn Vibes. This is another one that I have not had the opportunity to try, so I'm excited. I'm just gonna say flat out, I'm not a fan of this fragrance. It reminds me of stiff, old, hard, crispy, maybe moldy leaf debris. And maybe with some fresh leaves added to the moldy ones. Does it replicate autumn? Probably, I mean, it probably does, but I wouldn't want to smell like that. I'm conflicted because the whole point of the fragrance was to simulate or replicate autumn, which I believe that it has. My question is why? Why did we replicate that? <laughs> or at least replicate it that way. Clearly from my reaction, it's pretty evident. I would never purchase this fragrance and I think I would actually be gutted if I'd wasted $200 on it. The next fragrance we're going to try is Sailing Day. Sailing Day is not a fragrance that I'm familiar with. I've never owned it. And by the scent notes, it's not really the type of thing that I would ever gravitate towards but I'm always like open to try new things for sure. Guys, it's like smelling water. And again, I'm perplexed. I don't understand. So I understand the brief was to replicate sailing day. I'm assuming surf, sailing, water. It definitely smells like water. I will give it that. But it honestly smells like I dipped a strip in like water with a little bit of hand soap and then let it dry it out. I don't get it. This one has definitely been the weakest. I mean, it's, it's nearly gone already. You know, when you're washing your dishes and you let the sink out and for a few hours, the suds kind of just hang around the bottom. That's what this smells like. There is a tiny bit of saltiness to it, but honestly, mm -mm. Clearly, I would never purchase this fragrance. And honestly, I would say, save you $200 and go and wash some dishes up to get the same scent. Okay, so the next one is Coffee Break. And this one, I'm super stoked to try. I feel like this scent could go like 
either way, like really bad or really good. But let's see. Okay, so I do like this scent. I know of other coffee fragrances that I like more though. I feel like the coffee is not dominant enough to be like labeled a coffee break or a coffee fragrance. There is coffee, but I honestly get more floral and green notes with a slight coffee backing. It's not really, and I don't think of florals and those types of things when I think of a coffee break, you know, florals are kind of the last thing I'm thinking of. I do love the fact that the fragrance is creamy and like tonic, just like a cup of coffee would be. It's definitely very milky and delicious smelling. I think that it's a nice enough scent. Um, I don't believe that it hit the brief of replicating a coffee break. And as I said earlier, I do believe that there are a lot better coffee scents out there. And I keep coming back to the fact that this was $200 a bottle. I don't think the price is justified. And I think you would be better off investing that money in a proper coffee set. So the next fragrance is Beach Walk. And this one, again, is another anticipated one for me. Wait, what? Hang on. This doesn't smell anything like a beachy scent to me at all. Am I nuts? I'm getting inundated with like loads of floral. Like, I don't know what beach this fragrance was created after, but I ain't ever been there. I don't think luscious greenery and florals when I think of a beach scent. I think of coconut, I think of sandy beaches, turquoise water, salt, I mean, sunny day. None of those things are happening here. All I'm getting out of this fragrance, seriously, is florals, flowers, and more florals. That's it. I don't get coconut. I don't get beach. None of it. I'm also getting a lot of a soapy scent. Again, that's really not applicable to the beach. I mean, it's a floral, fresh, soapy scent. This is not a beach scent. I'm so disappointed about this one because I... In my head, I was looking forward to a creamy, coconutty, beachy scent, maybe similar to Solal Blanc by Tom Ford. And this is none of those things. It doesn't smell like a beach. It doesn't make me think of a beach. It makes me think of a laundry liquid, a floral laundry liquid, or a florist. That's it. Okay, guys, now we're up to springtime in the park. Oh, goodness. It's another clean, fresh floral scent. I mean, I guess springtime in the park would translate, I guess, to that. But look, it's not a bad scent, but it certainly isn't worth over $200 a bottle. It just isn't, in my opinion. I've noticed the more that I'm smelling here, they kind of, other than the ones I've said that are exceptional and stand out, they all kind of have this same kind of floral, clean, soapy DNA, and they start to smell very, very similar. There might be a few minor tweaks in the, in the formula, but honestly, they all kind of smell a little generic, clean and floral to me. This one actually combines three of the other ones. Like I smell sailing day, bubble bath and lazy Sunday morning all in one. That's what this smells like. I don't know what it is. They just all have like a synthetic soap bar element to them. For me, it's totally unforgettable, certainly not worth $200. While it's not a bad scent, it's just boring. Okay, guys, we are up to the new launch on a date. Have any of you guys tried on a date yet? Please don't forget to put it in the comments below and let me know what your thoughts were. Oh, goodness. I haven't even put my nose on it yet, but I just spritzed it and I'm not liking what I'm smelling so far, but... Hang on. When I saw the scent profile of like black currant and rose, I was thinking it was going to be a delicious kind of Amani Sea kind of vibe to it. Maybe I love black currant. Certainly, replicating on a date would, you know, take me into a very sexy champagne, fruity place. So I don't know. I'm a bit scared to smell this up close because what I'm already getting, I'm really not liking. Oh, no. 
I do not like this at all, one little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna say it, all right, I'm, I have to be honest, all I get from this fragrance is very cat urine, like not joking. It smells like a cat has drank a load of berry juice, gone to the bathroom, and then it sat there for a few days and somebody just found it. That's what this fragrance is reminding me of. I kid you not. I thought I would get hit with this romantic, very bubbly, fizzy champagne, and instead I got smacked in the face by cat pee, I swear. It's like sour and artificial and has this pungent, like ammonia scent to it that is just not pleasant, like at all. Needless to say, guys, this is probably the hardest pass out of all of the lineup today. This one is actually a fragrance that I would avoid like the plague. It is so bad. Okay, Sam Freak, so that is my replica review. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope I've been able to shed some light on these fragrances and perhaps maybe save you some money too. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine if I purchased on a date like the bottle? Because I was thinking about it. That was a close save, just saying. Again, guys, thank you for hanging in there with my very husky, horrible voice. I appreciate your patience. And if you have any questions at all, shoot it in the comments below. I will definitely get back to you. Thank you so much, Zen Freaks. I love and appreciate you all, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.